message from the FXFL. It's a new a minor league. I will let Brian explain what, what he's calling, you know, the league. But we've talked about this. Mark and I, we've heard Troy Vincent, a mm-hmm. uh, former player, talk about this. Even the league that there needs to be a minor league in football, not a competing league, not a, a league of football that plays different kind of football, but one that essentially is a feeder league to the NFL. And that's what Brian is the commissioner of. And it's going to start in a few short weeks. So, Brian, thanks for uh, for coming out here. And so just explain to everybody your thought process of what this league, the intentions of this league. Yeah, well, you know, like you said, it's a, um, uh, we saw the need for a developmental platform. Uh, we saw an increasing number of underclass meets in every year declaring for the draft. I think uh, the 2011 collective bargaining agreement really put this, uh, this, this train in motion, if you will, in the sense that um, it changed the rookie contract structure. So more and more underclass, more declaring. It cut down the number of practices you could have. And I think right now you look at, Major League Baseball and the success they've had with the farm system. You look at the NBA and the D-League, and people are wondering, why doesn't the NFL have a developmental platform? And I think we've created a model that's going to develop players and, um, you know, have them in game-ready shape. It's going to coincide with the NFL season. And it's, um, you know, it's financially sustainable. So, so kind of explain how it's yeah. going. It's going to start in a couple of weeks. The NFL is playing now. Your league is going to play now. How, how you, you look for the two to kind of be intertwined a bit? Well, the, the way the league is structured is, number one, from a contractual standpoint, if a player signs with us, and at any given time, he's given what we, what we term an NFL opportunity. That means a, a team calls and wants to bring them for a physical or a workout, or they want to sign him to their practice squad or activate him to the 53-man roster. The player is going to be able to leave our league and, and, and return to the NFL. And if they're released by an NFL team, they're going to be able to come back to us. So in a nutshell, it's basically a AAA equivalent of what you see in baseball. Uh, we've just applied it to, to football. Uh, and, uh, you know, we feel like that there's a need for it. We're going to play our games midweek. It's a six-week season. We're going to start October 8th with four teams. We're going to c- conclude our season on Wednesday, November 12th, with co- coincidentally is one day after the NFL trade deadline. So it, it times up for us very nicely. Mike and Mike and the commissioner of the new football league, which is a very interesting idea, Brian Woods, the FXFL. One of the differences between that, obviously, immediately in the Canadian football league, a lot of players go up and play in Canada. You have to make a commitment for a certain period of time. Two-year commitment. You go up to Canada. So Two I years. am fascinated that you're going to let a player come and go. So this really is an opportunity for those guys to get looked at and get themselves up there as quickly as possible if there's an injury or whatever the case may be yeah absolutely and that we're getting right now we can't take enough players we were concerned at first we need to start with fewer teams we wanted to ensure that the on-field product was going to be good and the fans would come out and support it and i think that's not our problem anymore now our problem is we have too many players too many qualified players i mean taj boyd is a part of this league officially right now he signed a contract with us a couple of days ago we're getting guys that were drafted in 12 guys that were on practice squads for the last two years a good portion of our players are the young guys that made it all the way to the 53 cut for this year. Um, But to your point, we're getting calls from agents. My guys were were made it to the final cut with the Chiefs or the Jets. They're getting getting the call from Canada, but I'd rather keep them here in the States. You're going to play with NFL rules, and you have a contract structure that that – suits my client much better than what the Canadian Football League can offer him. Yeah, the fascinating part here for me is we always talk about this. The only way you can get in shape for playing football is by actually playing football. I mean, you can go do burpees and sit-ups all day long in the gym, and you get called up three weeks or four weeks after training camp. You're not in football shape. This will get guys in football shape. How many guys per roster can you bring in? Well, what's your team size and, and, the, and the structure of, uh, of your team? Yeah, and that's a great point because we're, we've kept our rosters very small. No more than 40 guys on a roster. The idea is we sign a player to that, to that team, that player is going to play. To me, a guy standing on the sidelines, to me it's about live game repetitions. And so if it's a developmental league and you're going to develop players, they need to be playing. So we're, we're carrying six defensive backs. We're carrying two quarterbacks. We're carrying at the most three running backs, seven offense alignment. But by doing this, we know there's going to be some natural attrition. We, we're hoping that 25 to 30% of these guys can return to the NFL. But we want to cycle in a lot of players because – Right now, we're looking at bringing in 160 to start the season with, but there's probably three or 400 guys that deserve an opportunity to get involved with this league this year and get current film and have an opportunity to go back to the NFL. Was there a, a, a thought to start with more teams, or was there a thought, let's keep it smaller and come out of the gate the right way? That's, that was my idea, is that we wanted to ensure that the, the, the on-field product was going to be good, and I think by having fewer roster spots, we can make sure that the best is out there and, and engage the fans uh, you know, quicker. But I think... 
right now we're we're looking at maybe taking one of our teams and making it kind of a floating team and an and, and all-star format, if you will, so we can get more guys involved. Some agents are calling us saying, hey, look, my guy was drafted in 12. He was on a practice squad in 13, but he needs current film. How can I get him in this league? And I just don't have a spot for him right now. So I want to give as many of these players an opportunity to get film and get back to the NFL. I think that's one thing people yeah. need to understand is when, we, when you hear film, and that's what we're talking about for these teams. When a guy gets cut, as Mark said, you can't sit around. All these guys do then is work out, you know, do sit-ups, do burpees, lift, go run by themselves on the field. They need film for teams to see. And this is what, when we're talking about film, this is what we're talking about. There will be games and film for player personnels and GMs and scouts to look at actually these guys playing. It's called the FXFL. The commissioner is Brian Woods. He's in our studio um, and they're going to start playing just a couple of weeks. What conversations have you had with the National Football League about this? Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, our long-term goal is is to have an official relationship with the NFL. We feel like that's our ultimate path to success. Um, so with that in mind, I can tell you that I have engaged them uh, on several occasions. Uh, there appears to be some interest from their side. Um, I can tell you right now one of their priorities is is player safety. And how do you ensure player safety? Well, you revise rules. And, well, now you got to have guys in the field that can enforce those rules. So your officials need to be top-notch. The difference between the National Football League and Major League Baseball and the NBA is the other major stick and ball sports in the United States get their officials, get their referees from the minor league systems. The NFL does not have that right now. You can't train officials in Canada. You can't train them in college or the Arena League because the rules deviate too much. So one thing I know that they've been very interested in getting involved with almost immediately is a place to train officials, guys they've identified as prospective NFL referees. So I think, you know, there's interest from them on, on several counts. Then how about, uh, so you, I was just going to go there next. You mentioned yeah. officials. How about coaches? What, what kind of coaches do you get to coach these guys? Yeah, I think for us, you know, not all of our guys are what I would deem named coaches, but I feel like they're great teachers and instructors, and that's what this league is about. And I've, I've made, made uh, sure that all our coaches understand what our phil- you know, philosophical standpoint is, and that is this league's not about wins and losses. Don't get too enamored with your personnel in week one because by week four, if things work in the way I think they can work, those guys aren't going to be there. So you better keep it real simple. You better get limited to the number of personnel groups. You better limit your defensive fronts. I wanted to make sure that at least one of our teams this year, we only have four, one of them was running a 3-4 because half the NFL teams were running a 3-4 and the other half were running a 4-3. So. You, you mentioned four teams. Where are they at? Where will you guys be playing your games at? Our, 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 our uh Venues and our, our teams are, are Boston, and we're playing at Harvard Stadium there. We're in Omaha playing at TD Ameritrade Park. Um, one team I'm really excited about, it's kind of the way I see the model evolving, is that we have a partnership right now with the New York Mets, specifically the Brooklyn Cyclones, mm. to play at MCU Park and yeah. Coney Island. When I designed the business model, it was in the sense that let's go to minor league baseball teams who understand the developmental model better than anybody who have an existing infrastructure in place, who understand the importance of local marketing. They have a venue that's just sitting there two months out of the year. They're not doing anything with it. As soon as their baseball season ends, they can, they can transition to work with us. So our partnership with the, with the Brooklyn Cyclones right now is probably the one I'm the most excited about. Steve Cohen and those guys are to do a great job with that, that team. That's so three, and then the fourth Brooklyn is? Omaha. The fourth team is, is, is our Florida black tip team. But right now, we're, we're looking at making that kind of our floating franchise, the, 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 the structure I talked about, kind of a revolving door to get players in week by week. And so, yeah. uh, again, Brian Woods, the uh, commissioner of the FXFL, is going to start in a couple of weeks, going to be try to be a, like a pure minor league to the NFL. You're a smart, highly educated man doing a business plan here. I'm sure it wasn't a one-year business plan. So if we bring you back again in five years, where do you hope this will be then? Well, I hope in a year I come back and, <laughs> and you say, um, uh, wow, the NFL has already bought into what you're doing and they want to take an official relationship with you. Um, I can tell you under good information, there's, there's some existing owners right now that like what we're doing. And they think it makes sense. A lot of the NFL scouting departments are already reaching out to me individually. So notwithstanding my ability to reach out to the league office in New York, there's a lot of teams that see value in this and, and think this is great. This is where we need to send guys. And I'm, I'm telling I'm talking to Howie Roseman. I'm talking to Trent Balkin. I'm telling these guys, send me the guys that you want to see play and to continue to develop. I just don't want to pick guys out of a hat. I want to get the best that you think has, have a real chance to get back. So it's a terrific a, idea. It's a great it, idea. It's something that probably has long since been overdue. Without a doubt. 
I would have thought that the league would do it, and maybe that we'll see well, an official I, I, relationship For me there. personally, in, in, in looking at all this, I think what the league is going to do is take a good look at see how this goes, and then and when it goes well, which I suspect it will, they're going to say, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's partner up. We'll see. We'll find out. Brian Woods, thanks for coming up here. It's a thanks, very Brian, interesting idea. It. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks so much. Brian Woods. Mike and Mike, Mark Schlereth is here. More football.